رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي بسم الله Hi friends welcome to interactive medicine in this section we are discussing about the neoplasms of paranasal sinus paranasal sinus include we you know uh, the frontal sinus and the maxillary sinus sphenoid sinus and ethmoidal sinus and you can refer this in chapter number 14 of uh, Dingra it's a review book for ENT and the page number is 205 and the paranasal sinus or air filled extensions of the nasal cavity uh, there are four paired sinuses named according to bone in which they are located maxillary frontal spinoid and ethmo ethmoid each sinus is lined by uh, ciliated pseudo stratified epithelium and scatter among with uh, mucus secreting and goblet cells also there and you can see in this picture the frontal sinus ethmoid sinus maxillary sinus and spinoidal sinus and the tumor can be benign or malignant malignant is more common uh, benign, neopla benign neoplasms include osteoma fibrous dysplasia ossifying fibroma amyloblastoma or adamantinoma you can see here and osteoma is most common benign tumor of paranasal sinus and you can see there is a right right sided osteoma in the front of sinus it is the most common benign tumor of paranasal sinus and osteoma is more commonly seen in frontal sinus you can see two radiographic pictures here from the frontal view and posterior view the most common site is frontal sinus and then ethmoidal sinus then maxillary sinus then mandible osteoma is the benign tumor of the bone Osteoma may remain asymptomatic which means that they are not showing typical symptoms of the any tumor and accidentally noted on the x-rays so in this case uh, we don't have any treatment but if they symptomatic uh, which means that obstruction of the sinus osteum pressure symptoms due to pressure symptoms due to obstruction the pressure symptoms due to the compression of the tumor into the orbit nose or cranium and the formation of mucosal muco means uh, mo mucus and seal means cavity you can see muco means mucus and seal means cavity so which means that high amount of mucus in these cavities these are the symptoms so if they are symptomatic we can prescribe the treatments and the second type of benign tumor of paranasal sinus is fibrous dysplasia you can see the picture here the white arrowed one we can show the picture when we look into the look into the mouth of the patient and fibrous dysplasia is the replacement of bone into fibrous tissue 
and also okay see also you can see the picture of external appearance of fibrous dysplasia in this patient and patient seeks advice for in three cases nasal obstruction due to the tumor enlargement disfigurement of face you can see in this patient the right side is narrow uh, in normal shape and the uh, left side is enlarged that is the disfigurement of face and displacement of eye eyes and the treatment for fibrous dysplasia or all, all kinds of paranasal tumor is surgery uh, the surgery is main concerned with the reshaping into normal face of the patient the ossifying fibroma third one is ossifying fibroma it can seen in young adults Tumors can be shelled out easily. Ossi fibroma is a rare benign fibrosis neoplasm of the jaw characterized by substitution of normal bone by fibrous tissues and newly formed calcified products such as bone, cement or both. It is well demarcated lesion that differentiated it from uh, fibrous dysplasia. It has the De very demarcated line or surrounded boundary and the fourth one is adamantinoma or ameloblastoma adamantinoma arises from odontogenic tissues odontogenic means uh, tooth forming uh, tissues and it invades into maxillary sinus that is ameloblastoma is a locally aggressive tumor locally aggressive benign tumor the treatment is surgery next we can study the malignant neoplasms of the paranasal sinuses malignant means we can we know uh, it is not it has no well boundary and it can it has the potential to spread into many regions so so the incidence in paranasal sinus of malignant neoplasms is uh, most commonly is maxillary then ethmoidal then frontal then spinoidal and the etiology is uh, mostly unknown and malignant neoplasm of paranasal sinus is associated with the people who are working hardwood furniture industry nickel refining industries then leather work industry and also manufacturing of mustard gas and the fifth one the bandits of Africa uh, here we get the local snuff there so in that snuffs uh, the nickel and the chromium are high amount so this can cause malignant neoplasm of the paranasal sinuses and bandits of africa uh, these uh, tumors are most commonly seen in uh, the site is maxillary sinus so maxillary sinus carcinoma is most commonly seen in bandits of africa and it is due to the use of the local snuff and it contains nickel and chromium and the hardwood furniture industry the people who get adenocarcinoma of the ethmoid and upper nasal cavity 
and people who are working in uh, nickel refraining uh, squamous cell carcinoma and the anaplastic carcinoma are more uh, are more common in that uh, in that kind of patient, uh, patients and the histology of squamous cell carcinoma and the adenocarcinoma and we can see squamous cell carcinoma of the paranasal sinus is more common approximately 80 percentage we can see and the remaining 20 percentage we can see adenocarcinoma adenocystic carcinoma adenocystoid carcinoma melanoma and other uh, various other types of sarcomas and you can see two histological picture here the adenocarcinoma and on the left side and the squamous cell carcinoma on the right side adenocarcinoma you can see the glandular pattern with neoplas uh, neoplastic epithelial cells lining in them you can see the gland glandular plat patterns and also the cells contain intracytoplasmic mucin this secrete high amount of mucus it can lodge into the cavities and block the cavities and squamous cell carcinoma the key point is the formation of keratinous spur you can see a typical mitosis there because of that so many tumor cells are you can see it here also other feature is reduced stroma with lymphocytes are the other are the other feature of squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma is the most common of paranasal sinus and next we can talk about the carcinoma carcinoma of the maxillary sinus i already said that uh, in common it is common in we can see it in bands of africa because they use uh, local snuffs and uh, they produce local snuffs are there because of the nickel and chromium are highly amount in that snuffs the malignant carcinoma of the maxillary sinus is more common in them so we can write some points about carcinoma of maxillary sinus uh, the tumor is remain in the maxillary sinus which means that the tumor is larger in the bone or sinus lining for a long time and sometimes they give some symptoms like sinusitis but in common they are silent so most of the times we miss the symptoms or we uh, we miss the uh, miss these carcinomas but when they destroy the bone structures and spread into other structures and invade into other structures they show the symptoms for example if they spread into the orbit we can see symptoms related with eyes and if the if they spread into the nasal cavity we can see also some symptoms related with obstruction the epistaxis etc so this time when we realize that the tumor is spread and the clinical features of maxillary carcinoma we can divide it into two the early and the late the early signs include uh, nasal stuffiness or nasal congestion which means that the blood vessel is sw swelled and the related tissues are swelled so we will uh, we, we can't get enough oxygen through the ear uh, nose and the facial pastichiasis or pain and epiphora epiphora means the excessive water from the eyes
and blood stained nasal discharge so one of the point we need to mention that the carcinoma of the maxillary sinus are mostly seen in male patients uh, with the age of 40 to 60 years and in late symptoms include it depends on the spread of the tumor so i am here drawing a sagittal section of a patient who have the tumor in the maxillary sinus so i draw the maxillary sinus here and the tumor can get into superiorly superior spread anteriorly spread posteriorly spread then inferiorly spread from the maxillary sinus various region the tumor can be spread then also it can spread in into intracranially get into the brain and it again get into the lymph nodes and the tumor can get into systemic areas for example lungs and the bone more commonly in lungs and occasionally in bones and you can see the patient who have tumor in the maxillary sinus the tumor can get into medially it's the spread into medially and cause the obstruction in the nasal region in the antral region antral means the nasal cavity so if i talking about the medially spread of the tumor from maxillary maxillary sinus we can see the symptoms like nasal discharge nasal obstruction epistaxis the tumor may spread to anterior and posterior ethmoidal sinus and cause androethmoidal tumor that's why most of the times the anterior tumor is present as in androethmoidal in nature because the tumor is may spread to the anterior and posterior ethmoidal sinus and second one is the and what what if this tumor is spread into anterior region we know in anteriorly we can see in in anteriorly we have the cheek and the skin so swelling of the cheek can occur invasion into the face face skin can occur third one the inferior spread uh, expand into the alveolus with dental pain loosening of teeth occur poor fitting of dentures dentures are the some devices you know who have no teeth and we put some devices prosthetic devices it is an artificial teeth plate and because of the tumor in the uh, tumor in the maxillary sinus and they become spread into the uh, inferior region the dentures are not fit into the teeth then next we can see the ulceration of gingiva also we can see the swelling of the heart palate superiorly the tumor is spread into the orbit we can see the proptosis or bulging of the eyes and Softholmes also is a bulging of eyes, but it is in resp respect with to grave disease. We use that term in with respect to grave disease. 
proptosis is the bulging of the eyes and you can see the diplopia ocular pain epiphora which means that i already said that it is the excessive water from the eyes and the fourth one the posterior the spread of the tumor in the we can see the pterygoid maxillary region or pterygoid maxillary fossa it includes pterygoid plate it is spread into pterygoid plates and muscles so trismus can happen if the tumor is spread into posteriorly uh, trismus is nothing but it is the painful restriction to open the mouth so mouth remain closed due to the muscle spasm of jaw muscles can also spread into spinal sinus the base of the skull and the nasopharynx so i may made a mistake here so this is for superior is the fourth one and the posterior is fifth one the sixth sixth way of spreading is intracranially which means that the tumor can get into the brain uh, it, the spread can be through the anterior and posterior ethmoidal foramen the spread can be through cribriform cribriform plate or the foramen rosa from the maxillary sinus to cribriform uh, through cribriform plate or the spread can be through foramen lacerum and the seventh way of spreading is lymph node metastasis you can see here the retropharyngeal lymph node and the ethmoidal and maxillary sinus drain into uh, retropharyngeal node from the retropharyngeal node then later it drains into the upper jugular lymph nodes and the submandibular lymph nodes and you can see the upper jugular node enlargement and submandibular node enlargement so upper jugular node and submandibular node enlargement can be palpit palpitated but retropharyngeal node cannot be palpitated because it resides in insidely and additional point is the lymph node metastasis is uncommon and seen in late stages of carcinoma of the maxillary sinus and the systemic metastasis it's a rare and it can be spread into lungs most commonly and also occasionally the maxillary sinus carcinoma spread into the bones okay friends bye and wait for the next section